So, mm-hmm. that line that goes, adulthood is a scam. <laughs> <laughs> Do I even need to finish it? It's, it's true. Now. Everybody knows it's a scam. At least for those of us that are currently going through it, we, uh, know, we know. And the more we go, the higher the pressure is getting <laughs> worse. <laughs> okay, guys. So today we're talking about adulthood, and you know, the entire process from transitioning, you know, from living with your parents, like not having responsibilities bills like being responsible for yourself and everything that comes in between like let me even see how how did you know that you know <laughs> this is my new normal like when did adulthood start for you like you know oh well, mine started a while ago like at least four or five years of my life now i have been doing this adulting thing properly mm-hmm. from nyc let me just say from nyc because even in uni i stayed with my brother so at least there was somebody yeah. to support but from nyc moving down to abuja no family no uncle to run to i think i think nyc is say, where I've been the transition it. actually begins for mm-hmm. a lot of people because for me i think mine started before nyc sort of because staying alone no no it wasn't about staying alone so it was just about being responsible for yourself like from school from uni i used to do i think i started my internships like pretty early Mm -hmm. so i left the house like before i actually got to that adulthood stage so there were times where you know it's like ah there's no mommy and daddy here there is no like i already had to like work to like you know but they were still sending you money now of course and so you had like a trial run for us Uh even the trial run (laughs) is ghetto even the trial run too is ghetto because i just think it's good because it's early so you have an idea Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. what you stand to face in front and then the thought of knowing that it doesn't get any easier than what because you have no people will tell you that time you have not even started though you're like complaining about so it's it's really even (laughs) even people that had past questions like i don't think it works that way it's really something that no matter how much preparation no matter how much preparation you get i think it must still you go reach everybody Last, last 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 So, let's talk about, you know, first experiences as an adult. So, like, first apartment. House hunting Mm -hmm. was annoying. In Abuja. Abuja. The reason why, I I schooled in the south, right? Delta State. So, compared to Abuja, obviously, big gap. Back there in Delta State, we were paying 180K Mm -hmm. for a two-bedroom apartment mm. so imagine me coming to abuja and they were showing me gate man's house for 200k my head was just so like <laughs> the, the it was fucking i think up until my final year i paid 180k for mm. a two bedroom flat big house then they started showing me houses in abuja and they were taking me to the gate man like the the, the apartment you see mm, right tiny by the gate place exactly like they'll tell you some don't even have much. kitchen some didn't have like good bathrooms and they were telling me 200 to 50k it was really close so how something was the ghetto first of all i think looking for a house in abuja <laughs> like even if it's not a self contain like just hey. ag- agents you know when they say lagos agents they are um, well, it's not just them we're looking mm-hmm. for houses in abuja is actually ghetto because they'll show you the most ridiculous like don't you have a conscience how will you stay here mm-hmm. and then they will not really they will not really be telling you take it this is one of the best you can find it's always it's one, one of the of best the <laughs> plus service charge it's always one of the best so how something has mm-hmm. to be one of the ghetto experiences. Then I finally yeah. got an apartment. Now, the thing is, because of the pricing, I couldn't stay alone totally. So I had mm-hmm. like a flatmate. We were sharing the kitchen and mm-hmm. the um, bathroom, but we had mm-hmm. our separate... That sharing We one. had our separate rooms, but we were sharing those things. That so sharing one was almost, the one that I was not going it's to... It's not like, easy. Lie, lie, I, I swear, I was not going to compromise <laughs> on that. There's some things that... Maybe because like prior to getting my own apartment, like yeah. I had... Cause I moved to Abuja the same year as my NYSC. Oh, yes, so that yes. whole period of NYSC, I did mm. not actually stay alone. Like I stayed with my cousins and I, I kind of like just had an experience with just living with people. people. And it was weird. Like there were certain things that just happened you that you can't really it. talk about People like on what camera. Saying, we wish we have one or two family. You no, trust say. me. <laughs> trust me. Like that's what people say. Like, yes, it helps you to save costs though, but mm-hmm. there are just some things so that... So there are the downsides. Yes, there are in-betweens that you just know that, nah, I don't know if this is something that I, I don't know want if I can stay with longer. people to be honest exactly so I can't. I've only ever stayed with my immediate family I've never stayed with any uncle mm-hmm. or aunt the only other 
person I've stayed with is my brother and he's also part yeah. of my immediate family. So oh, I've for never me, it wasn't immediate family. With... It was more like, you know, okay, I'm in Abuja. Because when I, before I got my call-up letter, I was actually yeah. here. Like, I was mm-hmm. with my friend. It was more like visit. So when the letter came and I remember I was very upset. I told my mom, like, I want to redeploy back to Lagos. And she's like, Oh, you Why? were in Lagos already? Yeah, that's where I was doing my internship. So oh, I was okay, done okay, okay. and then the company kind of like retained me and everybody was like, when your NYC comes, mm. they're just going to post me there. And Easy. I kind of, at that time, I felt like my life has already started, right? Like, ah, people have it really mm-hmm, hard mm-hmm. when you finish school, do Not NYC before place. you will now get a job. But for me, I felt like that was like a transition you yeah. know, period for me. Like I was already going to be okay. But then when the whole letter came and yeah. it was Abuja and I was here. So my mom is like, why? You don't know. You know, mother has now. They try to make everything spiritual. Exactly. My mom said to do. You don't know the plans God exactly. has for you. Maybe Abuja Maybe is, is where you're meant to be. Thank Maybe you. blah 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 blah. <laughs> and I was really stubborn about it. Like I refused to go to camp because I had to go. Camp. I did not stay. I went the first nah, day to do all the registration weeks. and whatever. But yeah. I left camp that day. The moment I got to that door, I be that gate. I just knew that I was going back. Nah, I did all three so weeks I did not so. actually go to camp. I was like, I can't wait for the camp to be over. Let me go back three mm. weeks later and collect my call up letter. Maybe. and all of that so you know when i actually stayed i now decided that like, you know what let me actually experience the city so the period where people were in camp i know that time there's nothing mm. they did not tell me people used to meet their future husbands in camp <laughs> people make connections in camp okay. why will you not go to camp do you know the things that happen to people when they just i'm like Stories. i beg story, story. Mm-hmm. so eventually like you know the three weeks of camp i was actually in town staying with my friend mm. we were going out and i was like ah it's not that bad though. Maybe one year will not kill come, me. Oh, I did my whole three weeks, came out. How was your experience? The, the person I even stayed with um, mm-hmm. eventually. So I met her through another friend that mm-hmm. I, that was already living in Abuja. So yeah. it wasn't so bad doing the three weeks in camp, coming out. Was she in camp with you? No. She was in the batch that just left camp before okay, we entered. Okay. And imagine she was still looking for house. <laughs> so you know how <laughs> ghetto it is. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's no, the house haunting thing is honestly luck because True. it's luck. Because even my like where I eventually found when mm. I looked for I don't even think that I was going to find something like that, that with the budget that I had. Because there are people that be like, ah, ah, see where your house is. We we'll say to how much are you paying? Mm. People just assume that you're paying Millions. hundreds, <laughs> like obviously hundreds, <laughs> but like not to the way people were yeah. expecting. Like, based on the center of town and then, you know, mm-hmm. the space where it was located There's and everything. There's also the lock part, actually. Ah, it Some was people lock. get really good apartments. When you hear the price, you will You'll not be believe shocked. it. Yeah, yeah, so it was really luck for me. And I'm Let's not even talk about furnishing the house because ah. curtains are expensive. <laughs> I, I think I, I took to my time at the end of the day. I took my time. I didn't do everything immediately. Actually, that's the only way to go. I, just, except, I actually just except I think your parents are funding your moving or something. I feel like if, if you're really doing it yourself, mm-hmm. you have to just take be your patient. time. Look yeah. for the basics. Cover your windows. Get a bed to sleep on. The yeah, basic kitchen. You don't have to have a sixty-inch flat screen. Everything like. It's not even. Hmm. It's not no, easy. I actually took my time because I think the first thing I got after paying rent was yeah. my bed set. So that was bed wardrobe. I mean, it's the basic. Where will you mm-hmm. sleep? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where will you the, sleep? Then if kitchen you're going to be too, like because obviously food and I even started mm-hmm. with like tabletop gas before I eventually uh, bought in my the case, full one. You know, I got stuck because mm-hmm. the 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 girl right, she had somewhere else first before we moved into guys. So That's she had the all the kitchen. Your flatmate. She had all the kitchen appliances and stuff. Right. Me yeah. now. When we separated, that's when I realized a pot I didn't have to make. Oh, because <laughs> so at that time exactly you were sharing kitchen, that she had things already. So when it was time to now separate and she was moving on, mm-hmm. me too. I was looking for my own place because we didn't really fancy the idea of like coming out from our rooms to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So it was the arrangement was. Can weird. actually imagine how you said Do you like understand? That? You have to come out from your room, stroll a bit, enter the mm-hmm. bathroom, finish her, and come back to your room it was a and bit the same thing for nah, kitchen we didn't like it at all so we had to obviously move when i was moving that's when i realized when it oh comes to kitchen i was lacking expensive. like i didn't have anything pots so you had to buy all those things plates are beginning. expensive gas God, oh no, I'd not buy pots, yeah, plates. Not I didn't buy it. maybe that was where family would come in. I let's didn't buy not even those get things. Into it. Those things I remember expensive. my mom gifted me all those things. Like, you know, when she was like, Ah, you're going to so lucky new. now. She just gave me all those things, pots, plates. That's why, like, ah, she even told me anytime I already better bring back comments. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was yeah. like a process for me too. I had to mm-hmm. settle in, like, you know, 
basics like you said yeah. and then after some time you just be like okay maybe it's time for me to buy my tv let yeah, me buy my this exactly. because like, it took me a while like i didn't buy i think i bought my tv before my ac actually my ac should be one of the mm. last things that i bought but yeah like it was a process and it was hard i'm not going to lie mm-hmm. yes the only thing that i can never compromise on or mm. i can never look back and say you know this was not really necessary. It, I think it's a peace of mind and privacy oh, yeah, that comes no, with it. I would it. always want to live alone. No I matter how hard to. it was, like the bills, because you know how they say, you don't know how something is until you actually experience yeah. it. So from, yes, you think it's only rent. Me, that was my, I thought, okay, yes, I've paid rent. I have to <laughs> think of how much I need to save every month <laughs> and all of that. It's a lie. Welcome. When I started living in the house, like by myself, yeah. talking about food shopping, I know. Then, ha. like for people that use prepaid meters, like hmm. us, like buying lights, and then the whole um, what's it called? It's almost like every day you wake up and there's you ask something. Yourself, what could go wrong today? <laughs> That's adulting. Ah, I you just I just remember yourself. this story. So my first week staying in my apartment alone when I eventually moved in. Yeah. So there was this thing that happened to me. I woke up one morning and. I just put my, you know when you wake up, like you want to use the bathroom or something. I just put my leg on the ground and, and I, I thought maybe I was dreaming. <laughs> no, it was weird. If you see, I you called my mom. I was crying. I sent videos to my mom on WhatsApp. Crying? I just put my leg on the floor and there was water. So a pipe had busted in my bathroom. <sighs> and then the water rose to like, mm. okay, I don't know. You, you've been to my apartment yeah, yeah. before. So you know where my bed is like almost what? half of my kitchen all my onions <laughs> yam everything i was on That's the floor because it was water. like the water did not just stop by the bathroom yeah. the whole room down oh to my, my kitchen God. like it was almost even coming out of my main door and i was frustrated because first i'm not used to this type of thing exactly then <laughs> like, you're just waking up to this yeah, even like, if you're in your you family your house like and all that? these things no. happen like first of all my fa- I had it's this, so frustrating i had this standing fan that was plugged right and obviously there was lights so my first fear was putting my leg yeah. on the ground water and electricity yeah. i was just like come oh, what kind of <laughs> life is this <laughs> It was really like it was really weird. It took me some getting used to to mm. actually know that you know what. So I now started doing maintenance. I turned to engineer. Like obviously I have to now be checking, yeah. locking, mm-hmm. making sure that you just wake up and check this one has busted, that one has stopped, Things this one will has finish. blocked. Things will so go the bills bad. were endless. It huh. wasn't just paying rent. Like there are monthly bills. Sometimes there are weekly and daily bills. Like yep. so I think that's where planning, budgeting. But even yeah. at that, so you now be confused. Like ah. Should I be hungry tomorrow? I should go out and flex There's today. There's no financial advice you get that will be as good as when you start like mm-hmm. handling bills yourself. Mm-hmm. Nobody would even ad- advise Nobody you would again. Tell because you. by the time you, especially if you're even a nine to five person, mm-hmm. so you definitely have to wait till the end of the month to mm-hmm. get the list right. Then imagine being someone that likes spending and blowing money. Mm-hmm. By the time Seems first so. week ends, and your salary is finished, and you have to do three whole weeks before another one will come mm-hmm. in. <laughs> Nobody would tell you. Yeah. You would just start telling yourself, oh, okay, so if salary is going to be coming in mm-hmm. like this, this is how much I earn. Yeah, like you will start budgeting by yourself. I mean, you can't really budget your way out of spending because you will still mm-hmm. spend, though, but at least you will still see what you're doing with your money and in terms of saving you'll be able to do it like the things that actually when, when they save the, the easiest money to spend is money that is not your own so you know how no like <laughs> uh, do you understand so it's like nobody will tell you at that time that's where like your financial mm-hmm. um, literacy starts to come in because you know that you'll be shocking yourself with some statements you make even when your friends call you out <laughs> sometimes some things you say even you, you will not even catch know yourself <laughs> But I think aside like the bills and, you know, I don't want to say the responsibilities that come in, but mm. just that whole reality of you being responsible for yourself. Yeah. There's also the downside and people tend to make certain mistakes, like mm-hmm. living alone. There's the advantages and disadvantages. So I think for me, mm-hmm. I had to set principles for myself. That's where discipline comes in. Like, mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I'm perfect though, because yeah. obviously I made mistakes too, but I think it's important for anyone that is getting to that stage to yeah. know that these are things that I should like lay down rules or setting things that, you know, I would not want to do when I get my own place because some people get carried away like, oh, I'm not alone. Anybody's mm. free to come in. Mm-hmm. Anybody's, anybody can visit me. Is it like, some people actually want to get their own space because they feel like it'd be easier for my friends to visit. It'd be like, I have my own space. Mm. Funny enough, I kind of like thought that, but when I moved in by I don't myself, receive visitors. I don't receive visitors. Like, I do not receive My number visitors. one rule set for living alone was no guys allowed. So like, if Why? a guy is coming to my house, it's because we are on that level. Why? 
What's the why? Like, what What do you mean no guys That was allowed? just me. Did you like, have male friends? I do, but what are you doing in my space? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wait, telling don't you. Don't you visit your male friends in their houses? Not really. Okay. We, ha- we have to be, like, really close. Or you're okay. doing, like, okay. a house okay. party or something. But I mean, like, for personal connections, personal yeah. relationships. So I feel mm-hmm. if me and somebody were not on that level, that was my number one. Yeah. So this helped me to actually avoid a lot of things. Because yeah. it's like, imagine you meet a guy and then if you're that open, there's this mm. question that guys always ask. I think I had to ask some of my friends recently, like male friends, that why do, what is the intention when guys ask this question? Maybe if I was overthinking, alone. yes, you start talking to a girl and the question is, do you live I'm alone? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> sorry? You say men no, 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 that was not, that was not <laughs> how I used to think about you, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. I found a way to just to me I was just protecting my personal Your space. space. Yeah. It's important. Like literally just being accessible to just anybody. Every, yeah. Because yeah. like you meet people here and there and you know how many people do you want to let into your space all in the True. name of what talking? I, like the the times that I go a whole week because mm-hmm. I work from home so I don't I hardly go anywhere. Yeah. Sometimes I I would just catch myself like you've not even seen the estate gates this week. Oh. <laughs> that one that one happens. Like is that bad? So people happens, think so. when you're out of your parents' house, you go yeah. out, mm-hmm. you're always outside. It's it doesn't lie. work that way. Me that's a in whole the middle week. of town. There are people that just think that hmm. people when my friends come and visit, like mostly my family friends will be like, if I was living here like not you, sure. I will not be staying <laughs> at home. See you, you're close to everywhere. So I think sometimes mm. what we think about the reality is always different. It's different. Everybody's I mean, it's so different excited. for everybody. Some people can actually be outside because mm-hmm. they're staying in town. Everybody's so excited. But like, ah, it's I'm not going to be on case. my own. But it's mm-hmm. a lie. Like, I feel like it kind of like even restricts you. That's when you yep. have to now develop certain principles mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. you just even see a different part of yourself because even before I moved adulthood, in, I always used to be you. out. I remember that time now, NYSE. Yep. I was always going out <laughs> with my cousins. I always used to be out. But when now I started alone. living alone, my interest to go out actually changed. So I think that made me realize that maybe because I was not exactly very comfortable where I was. Like mm, you would rather it be not ma- Yes. But living alone is like I'm in my space, peace of mind, sanity, if you want privacy. To, because you really want to. I'm there. There's nothing mm. in my house that, you know, if I want to be in the house, if it's food, buy food, if I need mm-hmm. to order in drinks, do everything. So I think yeah. that aside, you know, responsibilities and bills and all of that, like just learning how to be disciplined. And I think also making decisions. Because when you're responsible for yourself, there are certain decisions you need to make. You're not yeah. go- always going to have people around you. There are things mm-hmm. that you need to do in between. You don't need, you know... Sometimes uh, even things like handling your emotions. There's nobody to cry to. Just the way mm-hmm. you were saying you called your mom <laughs> when the, the pipe... Went. Someone that never wants me until I've cleaned all the water. Exactly. So, like, you, you can wake up, mm-hmm. things go bad. You cry about it. You're okay, it's okay to cry. You cry hmm. about it. But you have to pick yourself up and do it. Yeah. Like, it's up to you. to It's your space. If mm-hmm. you don't do it, if you run away from the house, you come mm-hmm. back to that house. That even, is, this one even there. goes beyond, like, just living alone. Like, just yeah. being an adult. Exactly. Like, you have to handle... Sometimes you you try to be around friends, go out a lot because you're mm-hmm. running away from certain emotions or from certain yeah. things that you don't want to... At the end of the day, no matter how long it takes, sometimes mm-hmm. it's up to a month. You've not faced that thing. It yeah. will just spring up one day. You and just then, wake up mm-hmm. in a mood. You will have to face it. <laughs> and being on your own just gives you, it just brings you back to that reality of if you don't do it, there's nobody there's that's going nobody to do it for else. you. Like so exactly. that's really where I learned that because I feel like, you know, the way life started for me, like leaving my parents' house, mm-hmm. like I was just always in a position where you have to do it. You have to actually think of mm-hmm. what works for you. Like, think of the implications of what as you're doing. well. Mm-hmm. So, like, Omar, the thing, you know, easy. The easier, like, if I say the easier, the, uh, what's it called? The the more you transition into the adulthood phase, yeah. I think it gets harder. But it something does. that has helped me, I would say, is maybe guidance from the kind of people that I have around me as well. Like, mm. from friends to, you know, even family. I think that's where having the right people around you comes in. Yeah. Because I had people that, if I needed advice, like, maybe people that are more experienced, like, they would tell me, mm. you know, if I feel like I'm doing too much or, like, this thing I'm about to do is not necessary. I had people you. that would tell me, and they'll be honest about it. Like, mm. if it was like... That's when, another thing with adulting. You yeah, lose you, friends. You and you will also lose, gain... You, you will gain show you, you, you will show you how yeah. to detect, you know, yeah. quality relationships in your life. And that's... I know that's something that has helped me a lot. Yep. But... Hmm, I don't know. Like, I don't think... Everybody... To touch everybody... Having supportive friends is like one of the best ways to navigate 
mm-hmm. adulthood because for me now i've noticed that there are some people that i can't really call my friends anymore not mm-hmm. because we had any big fight or anything but it seems like they are still far from reality because of mm-hmm. how they behave sometimes you know some people either because they still have like so much of their parents involved in their lives and they're mm-hmm. still shielded a bit they, they make certain decisions that yeah. are rather risky and very mm-hmm. like stupid so when you know that you are coming from a place where you have to handle things certain yourself thing. you, you just get avoid away trouble like you just avoid certain troubles and certain kind of behaviors around you because you mm-hmm. need to be focused and you need to handle things so okay. it just it helps you adulthood helps you save your friends yeah. to be honest i think that's okay because i saw this post recently something that spoke to don't be stuck you know with friends or setting people because you feel like you've been friends with them yeah, for a it's long not time. About the time so yeah like that's actually true because as you transition like the yeah. older you get the more yeah the like more phases mm-hmm. that you go through i think not everybody like my younger brother i told him like last week he was telling my mom that oh what inspires him is school because he's according to him right now mm. like you know that they just started and he's very serious with school so he's mm. like this first class that i am on i want to okay. get to it's final year one. with him. <laughs> and i'm like yes and then he said mm-hmm. something he was like what even gingers him to like you know keep reading and being an a student is yeah. because of the people in his circle like he loves how they all ginger mm-hmm. each other and uh they always you know when it's time for school when it's time for that i'm like okay it's good that you're thinking like that but yeah. i told him one thing you should have at the back of your mind is the people that you started with you will not get to the end with True. them so like your motivation should not be because this person and yeah. you are doing this you don't know what will happen you have to have your own you wife. always need to have a mind of your mm-hmm. own because you know anything can happen you can just get to we too we went through the same thing <laughs> now all of us were once <laughs> in 100 level <laughs> And we got to final year. We saw how, how we some people that started yeah. with this and how they were. He, he needs to him. have his own reason. Yeah, I told yeah, like him you, you need to have a mind of your own, knowing that without these people being in the it's same your phase goal. as me, mm-hmm. I can still pull myself to achieve this. Yeah. So the thing is, as you grow older, yes, the quality of your relationships might either increase or decrease because the sure. people that you have around you is really really important and i've always been someone that had more older people like i think now mm. this phase of my life is where i actually have friends that are like my age, age. because mm. yeah growing up i've always had older friends like older older friends. i mean so, i think mine has always been a mix Older, yeah so my then. my mix used to be like okay i know this person because we're classmates or we're in the same class but Not like really from friends. actual friends yeah. people that i go out with just mm. to talk about they were always like way older so maybe that kind of like so was that a good increased. thing for you it Would was you say? good mm-hmm. yes because like when you're moving with people that are they've passed that level that you are yeah. so when you're there they are there to guide you they're there mm-hmm. to tell you certain tell things, you things that you should not do because yeah. they've <laughs> gone through it and they know how it ends mm-hmm. so that was an advantage for me and then you know um there's something else that i wanted to say about being independent and self-sufficient like i don't think anybody really i don't want to say it's not something i would advise anybody share but it's hard some people see you and think that ah this one is doing well it's like doing do you mean like not asking for help or no please ask for help if you can if okay. you have people to help you better allow them that is yeah. my mistake too. i used to form i know and i'm not doing it again i had though. to learn how to shout like mm-hmm. when when i'm not feeling yeah. Sometimes the pressure comes on you and you just need to pressure. shout. The pressure is always there. You need to open your mouth. Talk mm-hmm. to the people around you. Like, nobody is an island. There's a reason why we need each other. So, like, yeah. it's always very important that as you're dealing, mm-hmm. sometimes, I mean, there are some things you have to do on your own. Mm-hmm. There are other things that you have to get your friends involved or, like, get somebody else that yeah. is older involved. So, I don't think in adulting there's really anything like being self-sufficient i don't know true <laughs> true be honest, you can be independent points. in your mind mm-hmm. in your goals and mm-hmm. everything but i feel like when it comes to like anything that you can ask for help honestly you should i had to learn exactly. that too like there's no there's no you just die in silence it does not get any easier hmm. so people don't rush oh hmm. people <laughs> actually me I, I don't think i rushed mm. Maybe in, some, maybe in some maybe in some aspect like that whole wanting to just you know be on my own mm. like ah uh, I can't wait to just be responsible I mean, for myself always, like we all went but through that I phase beg. where we felt like if we if we were doing what we want to do by ourselves mm-hmm. we'd do it better but then we always felt like our parents were trying to control us with mm-hmm. the decisions you can't wait ah, I can't wait to leave mm-hmm. uni and enter and now it's up labor to you market to make this you don't want to make it big exactly <laughs> that's how it is. But anyways, <laughs> are you laughing at us? 
I think that I mean everybody will be all right last last. Just we're doing it now. No kill yourself. You've not died. Do you will not die. Do. We're doing it. Mm-hmm. No rush. If you are a younger person and you have not started adulting fully, please don't rush. <laughs> or, like take your time. What would you share based on your own experience? What would you tell somebody that is like maybe just starting NYSC, just you know about to move and get their own space or start paying bills or being responsible for themselves as I adults? Think everything we've said so far mm-hmm. just covers it. Like you said, don't rush. Mm-hmm. You have to know why. You, you're going for what you're going for. If you say you want to live alone, you must live alone. Mm-hmm. You should know why you want to live alone. You should check if you're capable of doing that. Yeah, so because some people have always been shielded be like by their parents and everything. Coming out and being on your own is not a joke mm-hmm. at all. Like you, There are moments you will just be feeling depressed and it's simply because of like all the things, the many things that are going wrong around you. So just know that it's not going to be an easy step but mm-hmm. it's also a necessary step because you will not always be, be at with home. your parents. So moving mm-hmm. on and like moving out of your parents' house and staying alone is a necessary thing to do at some point in your life. Mm-hmm. So go for it if you must or if you really want to do it right now. But just have at the back of your mind that it's going to be too. a journey, a rather long one. <laughs> that, that doesn't <laughs> end because apparently no matter how exactly, a rather it does not long end. One end. That. So just be prepared. Prepare your mm-hmm. mind. So as you go, just know that there will be more stumbling blocks. Yep. But, but you can better you planning can and you know Our having the right people. Did it. I mean, <laughs> <You'll be laughs> you can right. do it too. You do it. Everybody could do all right. Yes, yeah. last. last. So, thank you guys for listening and watching today's episode. We hope that you know you found it interesting, and I'm sure like a lot of things here were relatable to you guys. Mm-hmm. And thank you for coming. I don't think I introduced you. <laughs> so this is what did I call you just now? Jiggy, <laughs> <laughs> this is Jiggy, aka Jiggy, aka Goodness, Goodness Corner, BG Corner. What's that? Your but name on Instagram? Goodies Corner. Goodies Corner. Yeah. So thank you, Goodness, for coming. Do you want to say something to my audience? What do I want to say again? I don't know. I just introduced you, so. Okay, my name is Goodness, though. Really? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Goodness, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Goodness, for coming on today. Um, I was happy to have you on the show. Yeah, very happy to be here. All right, bye, guys. All See right. you on the next one. Bye. Peace.